didn't do it willfully, but they just had to. So when they did it, Allah said, strike the dead body with a piece of it. So they did, and that man came back to life, and he said, the man who killed me was so and so. And they saw a miracle in front of their own eyes. <coughs> okay, so that's a historical incident. What can we learn from it, us today? One thing we can learn from it, and let me show you, by the way, how the companions actually lived by that. You know, one day, one day, Umar al-Khattab was walking with another companion. I forgot who the other companion was. They were walking down the street, and there was a house. So they passed by this house, and there was a drain from the roof of that house. And as they passed by it, some water came down through that drain and it landed, some drops of water landed on the shoulder of that companion. So this companion asks the person who owns the house, who was on, on, on top of the house, who so was probably cleaning and that's why the water came out. He says, is this water pure? Because obviously, like soon, one prayer will come. He has to pray with it. He wants to make sure that his clothes are clean. So, so he says, is that water clean? Is it pure? Amr al-Khattab says, لا تجبه يا صاحب البيت. He says, don't, don't answer him. Then Umar al-Khattab says, ما أمرنا أن ننقب عن ذلك. We were not commanded to investigate about this. That's it. So don't be, like some people are very obsessed. They're very precise. Is this water clean? Where did they get it from? And so on and so forth. That's not the right way. And that's why, and listen to this hadith, and I'm telling you, this hadith is scary. Scary. The Prophet says in this hadith, he says, إِنَّ شَرَّ النَّاسِ إِنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ رَجُلٌ سَأَلَ عَنْ مَسْأَلَةٍ سُكِتَ عَنْهَا فَحَرَّمَهَا اللَّهُ لِأَجْلِ مَسْأَلَتِهِ One of the people that Allah hates the most is someone who asks about something and Allah left that issue open. Allah didn't speak about this, whether it's halal or haram. Allah left it open. He didn't mention anything. Like another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, إِنَّ Allah حَرَّمَ أَشْيَاهَا فَلَا تَنْتَهِيكُمَا Allah made some, things, made some things haram, don't violate them. وَأَوْجَبَ أَشْيَاهَا فَأَمَلُوا بِهَا And Allah made some things obligatory, so act upon them. وَأَحَلَّ أَشْيَاهَا And Allah allowed some things. وَسَكَتَ عَنْ أَشْيَاءٍ رَحْمَةً بِكُمْ And Allah remained silent about some of things. Some things. He didn't say halal or haram, He just left them. He didn't say anything about it. وَسَكَتَ عَنْ أَشْيَاءٍ رَحْمَةً بِكُمْ So, out of mercy for you. So He did not make them halal or haram, He just left them open. So don't ask about them. If you need them, you do them basically. But you don't keep investigating much more. So, now we'll go back to the hadith, the scary hadith. So the Prophet ﷺ says, one of the people that Allah hates the most is someone who asks about something that Allah remains silent about. Allah did not mention anything about this. Is it halal, haram? No, Allah left it open. And because he asks about it, Allah made it haram. Allah made it haram. So, if Allah does not mention anything about something, keep it open. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Don't be very specific. And that's why the, Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tas'alu an ashya'a in tubda lakum fasu'akum. Or you will believe, do not ask about some things. But when you ask about them, they're going to make you feel bad. They're not going to be good for you. Again, so, what can we learn from this? In terms of how we deal with Islam. If we are commanded to pray the five daily prayers, we pray them. We're commanded to make wudu. Before we pray, we make wudu. But someone says, why do you have to make wudu before you, you pray your salah? Why? Why not just pray without wudu? It's just easier. Now you're doing the same mistake that those people did. If you ask, for example, and there are people who did that today. Some people said, why is ham haram? Why can't you eat pork? Why can't you eat pork? So, why can't we eat pork? Because Allah said it's haram. 
That's it. Allah said, don't eat it. That's why we don't eat it, by the way. Yes, some people are trying to say, well, when you eat it, there is worms and there is stuff and it's dirty and so on and so forth. So that's the problem when you get to rationalization about things that should not be thought about this way. We obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's it. But some people got into, they say, no, they are haram. Uh, for example, pork is haram because there are worms and it eats its own feces and it's dirty and it's so, and so on and so forth. So what? Now they have clean pork farms where there's no worms and the, like this, the, the, the pigs eat wholesome food and they're very clean and there's nothing dirty about them. And there are, by the way, people who are messed up who say today, if you can get clean pigs, you can eat their meat. You see how? Because when you ask about something you're not supposed to ask about, that's when you get yourself in trouble. So if Allah says something, Allah take it. The Prophet said something, Allah take it. Don't argue about it. Don't argue about it. Don't open the... There are things, because why Allah says, وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا The knowledge that you have been given is very little. You cannot comprehend everything. You can't understand why Salat al-Dhuhr is for Raka. Really, you cannot understand. You cannot understand why five daily prayers. Why not four? You cannot really understand. Literally. Why is the Qur'an 30 juz? Why is it 114 surah? Why? Why, why wasn't it shorter? Why isn't it bigger? We don't know, we cannot rationalize. So we just, why, for example, didn't Allah show Himself to us? Like reveal Himself to us so we can see Him or hear Him. Why? Allah knows best. Allah knows best. So this form of thinking, and the Prophet ﷺ told us where this thinking comes from. It comes from Shaitan, by the way. So this is why the Prophet ﷺ says, يَقُولُ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاءِ فَيَقُولُ اللَّهِ مَنْ خَلَقَ الْأَرْضِ فَيَقُولُ الْأَرْضِ فَيَقُولُ اللَّهِ فَيَقُولُ مَنْ خَلَقَنِي فَيَقُولُ اللَّهِ فَيَقُولُ مَنْ خَلَقَ اللَّهِ فَإِذَا وَجَدَ أَحَدُكُمْ ذَلِكَ فَلْيَنْتَهِ وَلْيَسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ That one of you will say, who created the heavens? And you will say, Allah. Who created the earth? You will say, Allah. Who created me? Allah. Then you would, shaitan would get you to go, who created Allah? So the Prophet said, if you find this, stop your thinking process, halt it. And say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Because you can't understand that. You can't understand it. As simple as that. So this is why, by the way, it's part of being a Muslim. Part of being a Muslim is that you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah said something, khalas, take it as it is. Don't try to dig deep down. For example, whereas you have sometimes, some people say, for example, yes, in the inheritance, laws of inheritance among Islam, why did Allah, for example, among brothers and sisters, He said, the male gets double like a female. And why is this? You see, that's the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You could say, because yeah, there is more obligations on the male than the female. But in the other instances, for example, you'll find that the, you'll find the woman gets much more than the male. In other setups. In other setups, by the way, the mother sometimes gets much more than the brother, right? She's a female. The mother sometimes gets much more than the father. Again, so these are things you cannot, if you as a human being try to figure them out and understand the logic behind them, most likely you won't be able to do so. So when things come about, this is why Allah SWT says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا كَانَ قَوْلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ إِنْ يَقُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا Indeed, the response of the believers that when they are commanded to obey Allah's messenger, they say, they say, we hear and we obey. We hear and we obey. Now, if you get specialized, if you become specialized in responding, for example, to doubts about Islam or atheists or people who are trying to create doubts about Islam and you investigate these things, fine. If that's your specialty, go ahead. But you have to have a strong foundation in Islam. But if everyone is just gonna figure out some things, why did the Prophet do this? Why did he marry this number of wives? Why this? Why that? Doesn't make sense, right? Once you get there, the Prophet said, when you get this argumentative nature, you're lost. You're lost. Okay, so let's move on. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows that when people have this argumentative nature, what's gonna happen? Usually, 
So Allah says about them, after the story, after they saw this beautiful sign from Allah, how Allah brought this dead person back to life, so he was able to speak, and he mentioned who his murderer was. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءُ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ So Allah says, even, even then, like after that, your hearts became hardened like a rock or even harder. For some rocks gush rivers, others split, spilling water, while others are humbled in awe of Allah, and Allah is never unaware of what you do. So the, Allah SWT is saying here, after these people saw the signs, their hearts become hardened like a rock. What does that mean? Their hearts were not responsive to the truth. Were not responsive to the truth. And you will find in the Quran, throughout the Quran, a good heart is described as soft. A bad heart is described as Hard. Why? Because a soft heart is fresh, it's open. When the signs are there, it's transparent, you can see. But a hardened heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what forms around it? A screen, a shell of evil deeds. And these evil deeds, okay, will take away the freshness of the heart. So it will be hard. There is this kind of hard shell around it. So when the truth comes, it's unable to penetrate the heart. So the heart will see the truth, or the eye will see the truth, but the person will not be able to recognize it and accept it. Okay? So that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it. Allah says, even rocks, if you look at rocks around, rocks still have benefits. Sometimes water comes from rocks. And you find this a lot with springs. A lot of springs, where do they come from? From within the rocks, you find the water gushing forth or coming out. But Allah is saying, even the hard rocks have benefits in them and have softness coming out of them in the form of water. But when the heart hardens, no good comes out of it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, by the way, and takes us back to Surah Al-Baqarah. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ if you are unable to bring anything like the Qur'an, protect yourselves, beware of a fire whose fuel is what? Nas and hijab. People and stones. Who are the people who enter the hellfire? Whose hearts are like stones. Whose hearts are like the stones. So again, this is just connecting two verses. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a shift in how he addresses this whole issue. So Allah he was talking about the history of Bani Israel. And it's for us a lesson to learn. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the believers. Who are the believers now? These are the ones Allah is speaking to the Muhajirin and the Ansar who were in Medina along with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the way, he first migrated to Medina and we know there were Jewish tribes. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was hoping that these people are people of the scripture. And they know in the scripture that a prophet would be sent. And a prophet would be sent in Medina. And that's why, by the way, they came to Medina. They did not live in Medina originally. They moved from Asham and they came to Medina. They came to Medina. Why? Because in their books it says, there will be a prophet that will be sent. That will be sent and he would be in a land. And the description of land matches in Medina. Mentions in Medina. So that's why they moved to live in Medina because they were hoping the Prophet would be from among their children. But when it was the Prophet they refused. And that's why, by the way, one of the rabbis, the scholars of the Jews in Medina, his name was Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam was one of their leaders, learned people. So when he came, when the Prophet migrated to Medina, from Mecca to Medina, Muslims were gathering around the Prophet So he went to see the Prophet He wanted to see who is this man. Someone claims to be Prophet, I want to find out. 
So he says, I go and see and try to look at the Prophet And he had heard that, he was, that some people claimed that he was a liar. So he says, so I went to see him and he was surrounded by his people. He said, He said, when I saw him, I could tell this is not the face of a liar. This is not a lying person. This is not a lying man. He's a man of truth. So then he came to the Prophet later on and he said, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, in our scripture, in our books, in our literature, it mentions that the final Prophet okay, will be able to answer three questions. So he asks him about three questions. What is the first food that the people in paradise will eat? And what makes a child take the likeness of his father or his, his mother? Okay? Uh, I forgot what the third question was. But anyway. He says, what are they? The Prophet says, Jibreel just came and told me the answers. And he gives him the answers. When he received the answers, he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna ka rasulullah. I bear witness that la ilaha illallah and that you are the messenger of Allah. Why? Because that matches the box. Then he says to the Prophet, he says, listen, my people are liars. They love lying and slander. And if they know that I've become a Muslim, automatically they will say I'm a bad person. But what I recommend is that first you call them, invite them, and ask them. Tell them, what do you think of Abdullah ibn Salam? <coughs> Before they know anything. And they will tell you, you will see how much they respect me and they know that I am the most learned person among them. And then we will reveal to them who I am, that I became Muslim. The Prophet said, fine. So Abdullah ibn Salam was hiding. And the Prophet called upon these people. When they came, the Prophet said, Men <coughs> كيف فيكم عبد الله بن سلام عبد الله بن سلام what type of person he is they said خيرنا وابن خيرنا وعالمنا وابن عالمنا they said he's the best among us and his father was the best he's the most knowledgeable and his father was the most knowledgeable so they proud of him he says what if he becomes a Muslim they said نعيده بالله من ذلك they said no he would not may Allah protect him from that okay so Abdullah ibn Salam comes out and he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. So he comes and he makes the shahada in front of them. Straight away, they look at the Prophet and they said, Huwa sharruna wa ibn sharrina. Okay? He is the worst among us and his father was the worst among us. Straight away, like you, they lie in your face. Okay? So that was the story of Abdullah ibn Salam. So now Allah SWT is speaking to the believers and saying, Yeah, you basically hope that they will appreciate the truth. Okay, let me teach you a lesson. So Allah is saying to the believers, أَفَتَطْمَعُونَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا لَكُمْ وَقَدْ كَانَ فَرِيقٌ مِنْهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُحَرِّفُونَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا عَقَلُوهُ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Allah is saying, do you believers, like the believers, do you still expect them to be true to you? Though a group of them would hear the word of Allah then knowingly corrupt it after understanding it. So Allah is saying, don't think these people are sincere. Don't think they're sincere. Don't take them seriously. Because these people, you think, 